Hi there, welcome to my views and news. Thanks for joining the live chat session. Three topics which we'll cover in this live chat today two from Ethiopia and one from Somalia. Let me welcome the participants, then I'll share today the topics with you. Klaus New, always the first one from Germany. How are you, Klaus? Nahom Architects says, Hi, hello, Sajid. Oh, for Ethiopia says hi, Saj. It is a member too. The first member who joined today is Hope for Ethiopia. How are you doing, Hope for Ethiopia? Warm and special welcome to you. Uh, Hinok Ambaye says Shalom, brother Sajid. Burj Suyama here too says good evening. Natnail Teklemariam says hi, Sajid. How was your day? It was wonderful Friday. Uh, fasting, doing my work. Uh, writing articles for my website as well. Black Lion, long time. Good to see you, Sajid. Yeah, good to see you too, Black Lion. Galili says, hi, Sajid. Uh, I am not reading the entire name for some reason. Mulugata says, hi, my friend. Piklik Sai, what's going on? Is it infiltration or what's exposing Fano's leader? Uh, Okay, I'll, I'll come to it. Bilal Moshe Asaya says, Welcome, boss. Are you brother Bilal? Now you are again a member. Somehow you have managed to become a member. Uh, so welcome back to membership community. I know you were uh, facing some problems rejoining the membership, uh, but you have at last become a member again. So welcome back to the community of members. Korko Deng says, uh, you are let, Sajid. Engineering Arcade says, Sajid, uh, hope for it. He hope everything is blessed, he says. Klaus is from Germany, but living in Mauritius. Lithkovian, how are you feeling, Sajid? How, hope you are back to 100%. Not 100%. I'll be 100% when I'll be able to do my workout, when I'll be able to do some tough exercises. Just long walks don't mean that I am back to normal in terms of health. Bluebird joined too, says hello, sir. Anonymous one, a member joined today, uh, relatively uh, less presence by anonymous in live chats. How are you, anonymous? Stop playing, says hi, Sajid. Isobalio is back after some time. Is what is going on? He says. Michael Hapto. Hi, Sajid. Greetings to you. Greetings to you too, Michael Hapto. Uh, Muhammad here. Ephraim Tisfai. Human rights is first. He says, you are our enemy, not Fano. Killing. Abel Asafa. Who is he? Okay, I'll disclose his name. Why are you calling me your enemy? I'm, I did a video when... Uh, Military said Fano fighters themselves admitted the death of Ubante Abate. Again, we did a video when Fano fighters claimed that they had killed uh, Gadiza Dero, the military officer of Ethiopia. You want me to be biased in my reporting, actually. You want me to report it uh, to support one party. That won't happen. Whether you call me enemy or whatever, but I will give coverage to both parties. That is what my job is. Elisha Joshua says, Ethiopia needs to learn that armed conflict will never solve any problem in the 21st century. Yeah, Elisha, but uh, one point I want to make. Just like armed groups will have to learn, the government will have to learn as well. Why do people take up arms? Sometimes, yes, they want to seize power. And sometimes all means of political, peaceful struggles are blocked. That is why they take up arms. So you cannot just blame Ola or Fano for the conflicts in Ethiopia. Blame the government too. Muhammad says, uh, shame on you. I think Abi paid you. I think. He's saying, I think. 
that is the problem that without any evidence people uh, uh, behave as if they know things. They don't know anything. They just make assumptions. They start accusing each other, uh, being misled, and they don't ever acknowledge that uh, they made mistakes. That should not happen, I think. Zakaria Sajid, long time. Yeah, you are back after some Zakaria. Negativism here too. Yeah, I will tell his name. I will just wait a minute. Jumble join too, says hi, Sajid Jumble. Uh, though I know his loyalties, but the man is very reliable. Uh, I have seen that from where he is, he shared information with me in a very impartial manner. So I was highly impressed because I verified it from different sources. He has connections there, but he never took sides. Parmacon, how is Ethiopiology doing with you? Mulugatha, you're the greatest person who gives us latest and real information. Fox, good to see you, Sajid. The uh, Barhe, get well, Sajid. Thank you. Johannes Samari, hi, Sajid. How are you today? I'm fine. Johannes. Dr. Admaso joined too. Uh, Mulugatha, Shemalis, stop playing. Bilal, Carol Gota, Volde Bazizio. Where do Fano fighters get food and logistics from? From people. Hinok Ambai, Goetam Gizai, World Affairs and Travel, Alicia Joshua, Gab A. Be better. Okay, I think I have read the names of all the viewers who have commented today. Around 200 watching and dozens have commented. I just wanted to mention the names because I want to know them. That is the best way to know them, that I read their comments, I pronounce their names. Wonder Megan Emanuel says, oh, how are you doing? I'm fine. No. Three topics. Firstly, another Fano commander has been killed. Just a few minutes ago, Ethiopian military uh, claimed the death of this Fano commander. I'll, do a bit, I'll, I'll speak on that. There will be tensions rising in Somalia wars between Hassan Sheikh camp and opposition camp. Despite calls for de-escalation or uh, tensions rising, a broad alliance against Hassan Sheikh is emerging. Thirdly, National Rehabilitation Commission, uh, which was formed to monitor uh, and implement demobilization, disarmament, reintegration of Tigray fighters, uh, saw some big changes today. Commission chief has resigned, and one commission member who is from Tigray. Uh, I think he was TPLF uh, main uh, central committee member, and then he was appointed as part of the commission too. He has resigned as well. Well, let me start, viewers. Uh, uh, we know that today uh, the Fano Gajim spokesperson. Uh, Claimed that Uni Musica, welcome to you, a member. That uh, a general of Ethiopian military had been killed by Afano fighters. That this uh, Dero is his name, I think. Uh, some say he is a brigadier general, others say he is a major general, some say he is a colonel. Not clear. Most say he is a major general. But again, confirmation is awaited uh, from the government side. And uh, we saw that uh, this year, last year, when Fano fighters claimed to have killed some military officers by name, military did not issue any statement directly to dismiss the claim, but indirectly those officers appeared in videos, pictures. And that is how the military dismissed uh, Fano's claims by showing the uh, presence 
uh, of uh, E and DF uh, officers. We are waiting. Uh, will Gadisa make an appearance? That we'll see. Romo, he is from Romia. Uh, he has Romo background. Uh, the the Fano group say he was killed in Dega Demot in Gojam. Fano groups are very sure. They say that Gadisa has been killed. But we are waiting for confirmation on the other side. So let's see what the government says. But PP backed activists are denying the death of Gadisa. They say that uh, Gadisa is alive. By the way, yes, some uh, rumors are being spread. Old videos are being shared. Just today, I received a video from some people. They said, Sajid, you, you are not covering what is happening in. Uh, Addis Ababa in the ass area where buildings are being demolished, there is unrest, people protesting there, there is a confrontation there between the military and uh, people, DOT forces and people. Why, why aren't you covering it? He shared a video with me. I sent the video to a friend and, uh, and then I got confirmed. The video was old. So old videos are being shared to just create uh, a conflict in Addis Ababa. But here we have now formal claim of Fano fighters about death of uh, Gadisa Dero. Let's see, will it be confirmed? We're waiting. Uh, hopefully, in coming hours, either Gadisa will make an appearance or uh, uh, we could see more evidence about the death uh, or well being of Gadisa Dero. Meanwhile, uh, just an hour ago, another Fano commander was killed by the military. He's not as major a commander as uh, Ubante Abate is. Ubante was the main Fano commander, head of South Gondar Fano. And you saw what happened after the death of Ubante that all Fano groups, all Fano commanders issued statements starting from Skandar Naga, uh, Mekatao, Gujum Fano, East Amhara Fano spokesperson, all issued statements. Why? Because we know that uh, uh, Ubante is a main commander. He was a main commander. Another commander has been killed, but he is not as main uh, commander as uh, uh, Ubante. His name is uh, Shambal Mengiste. Shambal Mengiste is a local level Fano commander. Unit level Fano commander, you can say. Not killed alone, rather, uh, military says that more than 10 other Fano fighters were also killed with uh, along with uh, Shambhal Minister. It happened in Ibnath. Ibnath, uh, the man uh, between Ibnath and uh, Ambo Mada, this incident happened. I think it's in South Gondar. And uh, we have been receiving reports of fighting around Ibnath since this morning. Reports of fighting coming in from Ibnath, from Bore, from Dekadimot, from other areas uh, too. Uh, Fano fighters were claiming they had taken control of Bore, uh, Dekadimot, Ibnath, etc. Military is claiming the death of another Fano commander. Not as big as uh, uh, Ubante, but definitely a loss for Fano groups on local level. If Gadisa's death is confirmed, it would be a blow. I wouldn't say a major blow, but it would be a blow to the Ethiopian military. I could not confirm death of any top major general level officer general level officer of the military since the start of this military operation in the Amhara region. A colonel was killed, I think, a few months ago. And so I did a video on that. His name is Colonel Ahmad, I think. Uh, people said he was a general, but he was a colonel, basically. Then we heard rumors about Muhammad Taseema. But Taseema is alive. But Ghano Bakale, he's alive too. Uh, so Gadisa would be top the most uh, the highest casualty in terms of the rank for ENDF if it is confirmed. How will it be confirmed? Very easy. If Kadisha does not appear, 
till the next uh, in the next two days it means that kadisa has been killed or injured so we'll have to wait i think uh, both sides making claims uh, fighting ongoing i predicted by the way after uh Bante's death i predicted that now fano groups would attack people military officers prosperity party members government officials and their families they won't try to take control of territories now they'll try to capture weapons kill people they'll flee and that is what is happening now uh, first major claim by the afano is about the death of the visa let's see will it be confirmed or not wall is as bore is under end bore is very strategic fano won't be allowed to stay in bore but as i said earlier fano groups don't want to now seize uh, town cities they want to attack personnel they want to attack officers they want to kill them masfan says ebc today reported that the forest that the terrorist shane was secretly using for medical training and logistic uh, center has been controlled by mil mil military forces but uh, well uh yes military shares posts about ola to which military called shine but honestly i believe that most of the reports by military uh from romia are published to balance the main intensity of military operation by the army is in amhara region not in rome yes clashes between ola government forces on some fronts happening for years but there is no major military offensive ongoing against ola fighters in rome that is why i cover romia less because main focus of military is on the amhara region whenever there is a major development uh, i do videos on that magatism says sajid is it true that military top brass has left amhara for addis that only local commanders remain well magatism i would say that please don't believe what uh, these uh, youtubers are reporting they are not neutral they want to get views they are activists so they make up stories if top military brass leaves amhara region company commanders lower structure will immediately collapse how can the middle tier function if there is no top tier bahirdar is not under threat can you say that tomorrow fano will take over bahirdar all airports in the amhara region are under military control so why would the generals top commanders flee amhara region but the problem is that uh, when fano commanders uh, spoke to their fighters like i saw a video of zenbao from gujam today i saw videos of some fano commanders from shoa yesterday and all say all tell their fighters that we are going to reach adis ababa we are close now we have um, managed to strengthen ourselves just continue we need to continue this is a way of boosting the morale of their fighters don't believe whatever is being said it's a long conflict it will be a long conflict you see one year has passed in may before may i predicted last year that the conflict in this uh, region will go on 
for a long time. Back then, I was, people ridiculed me. They said, Sajid, come on, you know nothing about Ethiopia. Fano, loyalist said, Sajid, Fano was going to preach at Issa Baba soon. Military uh, imposed state of emergency to crush Fano in a few days. You saw. One year has passed. Nothing has changed so far. So military leadership is in Amhara region. Fano groups are not weak. Don't think that by the death, through the death of uh, uh, this man, uh, Shambhal Mengeste or Vupante uh, Abate, uh, military is going to crush all Amhara Fano fighters. No, it won't happen. If Tamaskan Bubante joins Pano struggle. So I have not seen any video or picture from him. I've seen his audio interviews uh, only. He is announcing to take over, take his father's place. If he openly joined the struggle, it would be a message, a clear message from the groups in Amhara that no matter what happens, they won't surrender. They would like to die fighting, then surrender, then uh, give in. This is the situation on Fano side. Military wants to crush Fano. Everyone knows that. How will solution come? Solution is nowhere to be seen. You'll see fighting. You'll see uh, claims, counterclaims. And that is how things will go until you see some genuine effort to find a way out. Your Mexican joined too. He's uh, asking where Moon is. Moon is, by the way, back. He has managed to leave Ethiopia safely, Eritrea safely. Uh, he'll be back uh, to join the chat in coming days. Be better is the Sudan Amhara border closed? It wasn't closed yesterday. I'll do a video on that tomorrow, by the way. Who do you think will have more support in Addis Ababa, Fano or Ola? I think Amharas are in greater number than Oromos in Addis Ababa. And uh, Orthodox Christians also in majority in a day sabab. You can connect the dots. Iri future joined too. He says they'll never be they'll never reach Addis Ababa even after 30 years without the help of uh, Isaias and PFDJ. Will Isaias help them? Kinobe joined too. He says, Sajid, how come you did not report that Oromos raised 2.5 million billion birds to march towards the Wallo Amhara region? Civil war could be coming. Where was this money raised? 2.5 billion birds. Where can all be? In uh, Oromia, did Diaspora uh, raise this money? Could you share details? Chiebo says the next battleground is Addis. Snipers are in Addis. The government officials are so scared. Ali Raya says, who told you majority is in is Amhara in Addis? Correct me if I'm wrong, Ali. Who is in majority in Addis Ababa? Addis Ababa. Not Shagga, just Addis Ababa.
No, Johannes says, can we say Fano movement has been checked by END permanently? No, 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 no. Johannes, no. We cannot say that, that Fano movement has been checked by ENDF. Hope for Peace says, Sajid Amhara is not majority in Addis Ababa. Minorities in Addis Ababa speak Amharic, but majority of Addis Ababas have mixed ethnicity. Uh, secondly, another topic from Ethiopia is about the Shome Toga's resignation, head of the commission uh, to lead demobilization, disarmament, reintegration of Tigray fighters and other armed uh, groups members. Uh, this commission said a few months ago that uh, Ethiopia would need 800 million US dollars. To implement the demobilization de uh, disarmament program. And so far, I think Ethiopia got promises of uh, around 30 million dollars. Uh, EU and US pledge support for this demobilization so far. Ishoma Toga has been holding talks, uh, but uh, but the government obviously don't have this much money, Tigray as well. So he was also facing difficulties. I think. The man has resigned. Uh, he and his deputy both have resigned. And one and his deputy and one member of the commission who is from Tigray resigned as well. His name is Atenkat Misgabe. Atenkat was a member of. Uh, TPLF Central Committee before joining this commission. He resigned and then he joined the commission and now he has resigned from the commission as well. Tilahun, uh, Tamaskan Tilahun has been appointed as the new head of the commission. It means that uh, this uh, demobilization commission leadership could not deliver. Federal government wanted more from, from this commission. This commission cannot raise money. The commission was formed to implement the deal to give money, uh, to, uh, to give jobs, uh, to help the demobilized fighters. Commission has no money. How will it function? How will it operate? Let's see. Uh, how will TPLF react to a Tankat Mizgab resignation? Will someone from TPLF be appointed to this commission that remains to be seen. Early Bruce, uh, Shamble is not dead, someone is saying. The Horn Affair says Shambhal Mangiste is not dead. Well, let's see. If he's not dead, he'll appear in a video, in a picture. He'll dismiss the claim made by the military. It's not difficult. So let's wait. In other words, let me speak a little about Somalia. Uh, where Hassan Sheikh is now face to face with opposition politicians. Hassan Sheikh government is working on some key constitutional amendments and a broad front, political front, is emerging against Hassan Sheikh government. Today, Sharif Sheikh arrived in Pontland. He was welcomed by Dini. 
Portland's newly elected president. Yesterday, Farmajo visited Portland. Farmajo, Sharif Sheikh, Dini, you can see. And uh, these people issued statements yesterday. Sharif Sheikh lashed out at Hassan Sheikh yesterday. Abdi Shakur, too, I think he's former prime minister or president. I don't remember correctly. He criticized Turkish in Turkish uh, expansion in Somalia too. Very important remarks by Abdi Shikuri He said that Turkey is after Somalia's resources. Sharif Sheikh talked about the authority of Mogadishu government. Mogadishu government does not have control on entire Somalia. How can it implement key constitutional amendments? What are these amendments which are a source of uh, conflict between the opposition and government? Hassan Sheikh government is uh, backing the introduction of uh, one person, one vote system. You know, we know that in Somalia, there is no one person, one vote system. Rather, clans vote. And then the clans elect uh, their uh, representatives to be member of uh, the two houses. So Hassan Sheikh government wants one part, uh, one person, one vote system, and secondly, two party system. Only there should be only two parties in Somalia, uh, not more than that. Thirdly, uh, the amendments include more powers for the president like a presidential system, and uh, more powers for Mogadishu too than for regions. Mogadishu will have more powers than regional states. These are some key uh, uh, points, key amendments, uh, which are going to be introduced by the federal government. Opposition politicians are rejecting. They say Hassan Sheikh government uh, wants to Hassan Sheikh wants to consolidate his power. He wants to be the man uh, with all the powers in Somalia. And what he is introducing in Somalia, he's doing unilaterally. Such key uh, amendments cannot be imposed without having opposition on board. Hassan Sheikh spoke today. He said that uh, he has held talks, government has held talks with the uh, regional governments and the amendments will be introduced. So serious uh, tensions I am seeing between the two sides in Somalia. Why are you so interested about Ethiopian conflict while there is the biggest war between Russia and Ukraine? Because my viewers are Ethiopians. You don't want to you don't want me to make videos about Russia Ukraine. Very simple to understand. And by the way, I can cover only one war, either this one or that one. I tried to cover that war too, by the way, and uh, on, on conflict news, but I could not do justice. Uh, it takes lots of time to cover one war, or in, there is no war in Ethiopia. Still, I am not able to uh cover whatever is happening here so i don't have the time the resources the energy to cover both ethiopian conflicts and russia ukraine war it's difficult very difficult foreign affairs as we love you sajid keep it up don't leave us uh i love being with you i love doing what i'm doing and it's because of you people. You keep me going. Hinoch says, can you check my question, please? Let me see if I can find Hinoch's question. I could not find your question, Hinoch. Could you write again, please? What type of weapons does Fano have? Be better. 
everyone knows Fano fighters have just small arms. They don't have any tanks. They don't have artillery pieces. They don't have any modern combat drones. Uh, they only have mortars. I don't think they have any RPGs or man pads. Maybe a few, but we could not confirm that. That is why they can easily move from one to the place because they don't have uh, burden of heavy weapons with them. Enoch said, "Don't you think TPL? Don't you think trusting TPL will end Abe dynasty?" Well, how many fronts would Abi open? I mean, he is uh, at war, you can say, with the groups in Amhara. He is not on good terms with uh, Isaha Sabuki. So, Malia threatening Abi. So, Abi will have to trust TPLF. His, his options are very limited, I think. Orom Ticha says, Sajid is paid by Habtamo to work against Gondar Fado. Oh my God. Para Abdi says, Somalia's military is purchasing big weapons. Yeah, that's very expected arms embargo has been lifted on somalia somalia obviously has every right to establish its army uh, that is why we're seeing new offers to somalia's government uh, from those countries which want to sell weapons to somalia turkey is the key supplier i think turkey is going to be the key supplier to somalia of weapons uh, maybe egypt as well but mainly turkey i think Escol says, Sajid, I feel like Ethiopian armed groups lack innovation. We have seen Sudan, Ukraine, and Myanmar use small commercial drones. Why haven't we seen that in Ethiopia? I think uh, Abdi Karim joined too. What's going on in Somalia? Just, just now spoke about that for around five minutes, uh, Abdi Karim. Uh, yes, you're right. Small. Uh, Commercial drones can be acquired if you know how to operate them, if you know how to use them. And uh, these Fano fighters, uh, their trainers, uh, they did not work on, on that. They can use it in an innovative way. That, that, that can be done, by the way. I agree. Maybe uh, they are not focused on that. Kira Amare joined to a member. Welcome, Kira. David Gibri Michael says, What do you think is the source of Abi's confidence? Well, his source of confidence is that he is in control of military, in control of uh, intelligence agency, in control of uh, cyber security agency, in control of prosperity party. Uh, Opposition is split. Romia, he has immense support in Romia. You see, he has a lot to believe that he's in a good position. Tim McKinn for Sajid, why you have interest in Ethiopian matters? Why shouldn't I have interest in Ethiopian matters? What is Jawa doing in Kenya? Horn Affairs is asking. No one knows. He went hiking, I think. And uh, he was seen climbing some mountains in Tanzania. Uh, he is trying to be relevant, staying at a distance. The man uh, will lose his relevance, I think, in his human politics. The way he is isolating himself from what is happening in, in his human.
Hira says, if the MOU deal goes through, will Somalia directly confront Ethiopia or, will, or will it instead invade Somaliland? Well, I think all options are at the table. Somalia will resort to all options. Whether it's direct confrontation or proxy war or invasion of Somalia, every, anything can happen. So don't, don't just uh, rule out direct confrontation. With 41 minutes have passed, I think we should end this live chat session. Uh, Ma says, Ethio Forum, fake interview of uh, Damake. That, that YouTube is owned by TPLF and its supporters. Well, they interviewed Damake a few weeks ago. Are you talking about that old interview or some new interview? If the interview is fake, I think Damake can release a video message. He can clarify. When last time, uh, Ethio Forum uh, aired Damake's interview, we did not see any denial from Damake. Am I right? Are you working for Egypt? Someone is saying. Just a few minutes ago, I was working uh, for Haftam Oyalio. Now I'm working for Egypt. And before that, I was, I was working for Abi2 uh, in, in comment section. I learned. Let's end this live chat session. Thank you for joining. 42 minutes have passed. We talked about death of another Fano a commander today, claimed by military. Uh, Shambal Mangiste has been killed in around Ibnath in South Gonda, second South Gonda Fano uh, commander, allegedly killed by military. Let's see. Meanwhile, Fano fighters today claim to have killed Gadisa Dero. Uh, a general of military, but again, verification from the military side is awaited. I talked about National Rehabilitation Commission, uh, whose chief has been fired or he resigned to Shaman Toga. Early tensions rising between Hassan Sheikh and opposition politicians like Abdi Shakur, Sharif Sheikh, Farmajo over constitutional reforms, uh, which are key reform. Uh, I spoke on that. Uh, Let's see how the tension is uh, resolved. If, will there be any de-escalation? That we'll see in coming. Again. Thank you for watching. Stay in touch. Stay blessed. Stay safe. Till uh, tomorrow. Bye-bye.